Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. 
while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The Lord, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. All together there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. So picture it for a moment. You're walking down the street, minding your own business. Perhaps you're right next to a little stream or a culvert or a small lake. And suddenly someone walks up to you out of the blue and either dunks you completely in the water or just takes a big scoopful of it and pours it over your head. What's your reaction? Chances are this is not going to escape your notice. It's going to disrupt your day and it's going to be an interruption in whatever it was you were thinking and doing leading up to that moment. In other words, it's going to be significant. It's supposed to be significant. The sacraments are supposed to be physically significant. I'm sometimes afraid that with the Eucharist, it's a little too easy to miss it. The simple act of popping a wafer of bread in our mouths and then taking a sip of wine is a little too close to what we can do in our everyday lives quite mindlessly and not even really catch the significance of it. But fortunately, with baptism, we can't possibly miss it. Even if we do a relatively tame baptism, no full immersion of the body, but just pouring a little sprinkle of water over the head, we're still performing a physical act that is different enough from anything we do in our everyday lives that we can't help notice the significance of it. Have you ever pondered the fact that every single sacrament of our church is an intensely physical act? With the Eucharist, we are quite literally eating God. Take a long moment to ponder that. That's the kind of thing that keeps me up at night. We creatures are literally ingesting and imbibing our creator. That is wild and wonderful. And in baptism, of course, there is the ritual drowning, the immersion in water, or at least the pouring over of water. And it doesn't end there. With burial, the key act is the committal of the physical body back to the earthly elements from which it came. Our church's classical teaching around marriage is that it is the physical sexual act that actually seals the sacrament. And with the Uh, sacraments where it is least visible, perhaps, confirmation and ordination, 
The most significant part of the liturgy is the moment where the bishop physically lays hands upon the person being confirmed or ordained. There is an indispensable physicality to all of the sacraments of our church. Now this begs the question, why? When we get to Ash Wednesday, we hear those classic words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. These physical bodies are just pieces of earth, and they will ultimately return to the earth from which they came. So why is the body and the physicality so essential and so important in the sacraments? Well, if we listen to St. Paul as he explains in some detail the mechanics, if you will, of the resurrection, we get some clues. When we pass through this life and on into the fuller life that awaits us next, we don't become disembodied spirits. As a matter of fact, our ultimate state is to be united with perfected, immortal bodies that dwell in the resplendent presence of God forever and ever. We are eternally embodied creatures according to the scriptures and traditions we have inherited. So what does that make this sort of embodied existence? Perhaps the best analogy is to say it's a little bit of a training ground. Yes, these bodies we currently occupy are fleeting and impermanent, and they are our training ground for an eternity of an embodied existence that is meant to be the perfection of what we have started here. Now, yes, of course, in the training ground, there is a whole lot of forgiveness. That is what we here in the church call grace. But that does not make what we do here with these bodies in the training ground unimportant. As a matter of fact, if we remember all the stories of Jesus' resurrection and some of those chilling and stirring narratives of, for example, Thomas insisting on putting his fingers in the wounds, in the holes in Jesus' body, and obviously being able to do so, our resurrected, our perfected bodies will still bear the marks of whatever we have done and whatever we have not done in these temporary training ground tabernacles that we're given to inhabit right now. This is why the sacraments are so physical. They are our opportunity to glorify God, to worship God, to experience God in and through our bodies. Now, current circumstances have made that more difficult than ever. I would say that over the course of many centuries, we as a human race have become increasingly bifurcated, increasingly disintegrated. There is this unspoken notion that soul and body are two entirely separate things and ne'er the twain shall meet, but this could not be more antithetical to what our Christian tradition teaches us. It says, yes, the soul is indeed immortal, the body that we occupy right now is mortal, but nonetheless the unity of soul and body is an eternal thing, and even here in this temporary realm, we are supposed to be always mindful of that. And that is why we have sacraments such as baptism. So what are we to do with that right now? When physicality, physical contact, physical touch, just about physical anything, has been so interrupted and disrupted by this pandemic in which we find ourselves, I think we are actually rather than to put it on hold, to elevate all the more the importance of embodied worship, embodied experience of the divine. And we're invited to do it in perhaps very different and creative ways that we haven't done before. 
Of course, there are still the sacraments of the church, but as you've noticed in recent months, they are somewhat more limited than we're used to them being. But when we are given the opportunity to experience them, to, for example, receive the Eucharist, let's take an extra long moment to be fully present to what we are doing, to be fully present to the act of literally eating God, receiving God into our very physical bodies. And then let's find other ways to enjoy and experience the physical sacramentality to which we are invited 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If it is available to you, I invite you to take walks in nature. And as you do, make it a true sacrament. Make it an experience of feeling God and of knowing God in your body. Be so present and so aware of the sound of the birds chirping around you, the feel of the sun on your face, the pleasure and the pain that you may be feeling in your muscles and your joints, and realize that all of it is an expression of the power, the providence, the goodness of God. Experience it as a sacrament. Or maybe set out a special meal for yourself and for those people with whom you may still be able to share such a thing at this time. Pour as much attention as possible into preparing something that is nutritious, that is delicious, and as you allow it to nourish your body, feel it as it enters you. Realize what it is. It is not only elements of carbon and nitrogen and oxygen and other trace nutrients, but also the very Spirit of God entering into you, enlivening your flesh, and keeping you vital for however long you're going to occupy this training ground before you ultimately are united with your perfected body in heaven. My friends, let this time of pandemic be one that is more sacramental rather than less. Remember the importance of your physical body, the importance of physical sacramentality. Remember that even though this earthly tent is a temporary one, God means for you to care for it, to nurture it as if it were the very temple of the Holy Spirit, just as scripture teaches us that it is. And if you do so, I guarantee you are investing in those treasures in heaven that our Lord constantly encourages us to to cultivate. May this feast of the baptism of our Lord be a re-baptism of your body and of your spirit. Amen. And let us now reaffirm our commitment to Christ and renew our baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived conceived by the power of the Holy Holy Spirit Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. 
Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, will with with God's help. help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. With boundless joy in Christ's Christ's epiphany to all peoples, let us pray, saying, O Christ of all nations, hear our prayer. O God, who made your blessed Son manifest to all the peoples of the world and bid him to preach peace to those far off and those near, you call your people to unite in worship that we might receive power to become your children, divine beings in whom your word has hands and feet. Pour out your blessing upon the church throughout the world that gathers for this purpose. Send this blessing especially today upon the Anglican Communion, including Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia. Pour out your spirit also upon the Episcopal Church and our diocese, including Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, the Church of the Epiphany in San Carlos, and True Sunshine Church in San Francisco. Let your blessing also come to our fellow faith assemblies, especially Crosswinds Church in Livermore. O Christ of all the nations, Hear our prayer. O God, in whom mercy and justice embrace, we ask for your love to take wings in all the nations and peoples of the world. Bend the hearts of all nations and peoples towards peace and righteousness. Send your spirit especially upon Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all who serve in legislative assemblies or judicial roles in every land. O Christ of all the nations, hear our prayer. O God of perfect health and wholeness, in this time of pandemic and the fear and uncertainty that surround it, we lift up to you all those who care for the sick and the suffering. Pour out a special blessing upon all who follow your call to care for others in body, mind, or spirit, especially all nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, and Brad O and Brad S. Give them the gifts of courage and joy in their work and protect them from all adversity and harm. O Christ of all nations, Hear our prayer. O word made flesh, this congregation gathers together as a people inspired by your first coming and looking for your coming again. Bless all its members with the gifts of hope, wisdom, and compassion. We lift up to you especially these members in our weekly cycle of prayer. We pray for Roger and Susie, for Mary, Steve, Michael, and Sandra, as well as those in military service, Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. O Christ of all the nations, hear our prayer. We pray also for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those who have requested our prayers for healing and wholeness. 
We pray for Olivia, Becky, Carl, Kathy, Dave, Aaron, Esteban, Miroslava, and Tamara, for Glennis, for Geraldine, Umberto, Candida, and family, for Janice, for Jim and Janet, John M, Josh, Lisa B, Luke, Marge and family, Marie R, Mary L, Marissa and family, Monty and Judy, Nan D, Nick, Olga, Michael, Sandra and Henrietta, Sarah, Michael E, Sharon, Sylvia P, Steve W and children, Tamara S, the Ruzika family, the Boer family, and the Montgomery family. And we wish a very happy eighth birthday to young Max. And healing prayers for all of God's creatures experiencing the chaos, and especially all those suffering from COVID. May you all feel God's love for you. O Christ of all nations, hear our prayer. Lord Christ, in your passion and resurrection, you made death the gateway to new and eternal life. Pour that life upon all your servants departed this life, especially Ashley B., Marie R., Vern P., Joan B., and Elder M., and raise them to everlasting glory in your kingdom. O Christ of all nations, hear our prayer. And now, Christ, in eager anticipation of your coming kingdom, we pray to you with hearts and voices for our other needs and concerns. And we offer you thanks for all the blessings of this life. O oh God, we thank you that when your son Jesus emerged from the waters of baptism, he made the whole creation new. Give us grace to see in the world around us and especially in our own bodies that new creation full of your spirit and full of your love and give it the care and reverence that it is due. All this we ask in his most holy name. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
and peace to each and every one of you and a very happy feast of the baptism of our Lord. We are now about to move into the service of Holy Communion, but before that, I would just like to say a word of welcome. If you happen to be somebody who uh, is tuning in for the first time or one of the first times uh, with whom St. Bartholomew's Church may not be that familiar, if you are in that category, I warmly welcome you. My name is Andy. I'm the priest and the pastor here, and I hope that you will use some of the contact information on our website to reach out, and I would certainly love to get to know you better, as with the other members of this church, uh, during this season where it is so much more difficult to have direct contact with one another. So please do avail yourself of that. Please also be aware that uh, we are continuing our practice of having worship at 3 p.m. on Sundays in the parking lot. Uh, the reserve elements of communion that are consecrated at this and previous services will be available to those who wish to receive them uh, during this epiphany season. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. 
joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy you came to our help, so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We We praise praise you, we bless bless you, you. we We give give thanks thanks to you, you. and we we pray pray to you. Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them 
and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, especially the beloved of our congregation, Elda, Joan, Vern, and Marie, and all who have gone before, and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, blessed Bartholomew, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours. Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! These are the gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you to commune with our Lord and with one another in your hearts, and as the opportunity to take the physical sacrament becomes available, receive God into your very body. In thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, may Christ, whom God made manifest to all the nations of the world, rise like a star in your hearts, and through you may he continue to be made manifest to the world about. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia!